a tentative agreement uh, <clears throat> in the case uh, Adams uh, versus the City of Baldwin Park. So that's tentative, and we'll report uh, further out as we go on. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion for um, adjournment of the study session. That is my that is my motion. Second. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Monica Garcia. Any objections? Seeing on so move. All righty. So at this point, I'd like to open up the Baldwin Park City Council regular meeting. Uh, today is March the 20th, uh, 2019, and the time is 7.05. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and go into the invocation. I'm not certain if, oh, pa yes, we have Pastor Flores and Pastor Jackson, as well as Pastor Jackson's wife here this evening. So if we want to lead us in an invocation. I will ask all those that are able to stand to please do so at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council, and all those who attended here uh, this evening. Uh, let us pray. Gracias, Señor, por este momento y este privilegio, Señor, para participar en esta ciudad, su ciudad, Lord. We're grateful for the privilege you've given us to participate in your city, Lord. We're grateful for our young people, our children, our adults, our seniors, the opportunity we have to live life with one another. We're grateful, Lord, for life that you give us, Lord, and the, uh, our leaders, our mayor, council, and all those that serve in public office, Lord, we're grateful for. We ask your hand, Lord, upon this time, Lord, that your blessing would be felt and experienced. Uh, give us guidance, Lord, to honor you in all that we do and serve your people effectively. Gracias, Señor, por este momento, Señor. Ayuda, Señor, el liderazgo aquí de la ciudad uh, y todos los, los personas para participar en este momento. En el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amen. Amen. Thank you. At this point, we'll face a flag. Uh, play. Oh, sorry about Pastor Jackson. Can't forget that. All right. Thank you. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just bless you and we thank you, Lord. First of all, Lord, I say thank you for the unity uh, that we have, Father God. Unity in the clergy, unity in the police department, unity here at City Hall, unity in our uh, community, Lord. Wisdom and knowledge come from you. And we're asking you, Lord God, and giving uh, the mayor and the city council and all uh, wisdom and understanding and how to govern uh, Baldwin Park. We're asking you putting your mighty hand upon our police department and our fire department as they're out there in the streets uh, doing services uh, for us, that you will keep them protected, Lord, that they will leave uh, uh, their home and do their job and go back home safely, Lord, to the next day. We're asking you, Lord God, in touching our schools, Lord. Our children need your divine guidance, Lord. And I thank you, Lord God, for touching our jobs in Baldwin Park here, Lord God, that uh, you will prosper our community, Lord. And we just bless you and we, we thank you because you're God and there's no other God like you. And we pray in the name of the Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you. Before we go over to the flag, also, Pastor Jackson, nice to see your wife here this evening. Amen. Thank you. All right, so at this point, we'll face the flag. Place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Thank you very much, and uh, good evening to everyone. At this point, I will go ahead and have the uh, city treasurer conduct a uh, roll call. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Buenas noches a todos y bienvenidos. Councilmember Paul Hernandez. Present. Councilmember Alejandra Avila. Present. Councilmember Ricardo Pacheco. Mayor Pratam Monica Garcia. Yeah. Mayor Manuel Lozano. Present. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for <clears throat> for hosting that. So at this point, council members, have anyone they wish to close on? Anyone's behalf? Okay. Uh, if not, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and go over to the. Um, the proclamation, so the, we, the first one that we have is the proclamation recognizing the DMV and Donate for Life Month. So who is who is uh, actually hosting this? If not, we do have, we, we, there isn't anyone? All right, so at this point, we'll just kind of read it off. Do we have the DMV proclamation? Yes, yes I'll have a <clears throat> council member, you want to go ahead and read that real quick? All right, so thank you. All right, go ahead. 
Okay, we have the DMV Donate oh. Life California Month. Do you want them to come up here? Yeah, come on up here. That's fine. Thank you. Proclamation, DMV Donate Life California Month, April 2019. Whereas organ, tissue, marrow, and blood donation are life-giving acts recognized worldwide as expressions of compassion to those in need. Whereas more than 121,000 individuals nationwide and more than 21,000 California are currently on the na national organ transplant waiting list, and every 90 minutes, one person dies while waiting due to the shortage of donated organs. Whereas the need for donated organs is especially urgent in Hispanic and African American communities. At any given 6,000 patients are in need of volunteer marrow donors. Whereas a single individual donation of the heart, lungs, liver, kidney, pancreas, and small intestines can save up to eight lives. Donation of tissue can save and heal the lives of up to 50 others. And a single blood donation can help three people in need. Whereas millions of lives each year are saved and healed by donors, donors, over 10 million Californians have signed up with the state authorized Donate Life California Registry to ensure their wishes to be organ and tissue donors are honored. Whereas the California residents can sign up with the Donate Life California Registry when applying or renewing their driver license or ID cards at the California Department of Motor Vehicles. Now, therefore, I, Manuel Lozano, Mayor of the City of Baldwin Park, along with Mayor Pro Tem Monica Garcia, Councilmember Alejandra Avila, Paul Segar Hernandez, Ricardo Pacheco, City Treasurer Maria Contreras, and City Clerk Jean M. Ayala, do hereby proclaim April 2019 as National Donate Life Month, DMV Donate Life California Month in the City of Baldwin Park, California. In doing so, we encourage all Californians to check yes when applying for or renewing their driver's license or ID card, or by signing up at www.donatelifecalifornia.org or www.donvidacalifornia.org. All right, thank you. Come on, come on up here. Well, when I, first of all, thank you very much uh, for taking the opportunity to be here today on this special day. Thank you. And of course, very informative. So I'll give you the mics so you could explain to our audience. <clears throat> Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's nice to uh, have Baldwin Park as um, <clears throat> representing um, in the importance of eye organ and tissue donation. Uh, I, on behalf of One Legacy and all the transplant community, accepts this proclamation. Uh, this proclamation will be shared at, you can see this proclamation also at our run walk, which is April 27, 2019 at the Cal State University Fullerton campus. I have some save the date cards back in the back. Uh, thank you very much, and you have a great evening. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. When is it? Thank you. Everybody says that, but everything can be used. They don't. They haven't seen a lot. They can't see anymore. Let me just say this one. Okay, all right. Thank you. What's that you're saying? Thank you very much. So at this point, we're going to have a Council Member Ricardo Pacheco read the uh, next one. The proclamations yeah. way over there. Thank you. Dave, do you mind bringing that? I saw you for the. Um, Thank you. I may have seen Daniel that I've never seen. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's, uh, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the next proclamation is for the American Red Cross Month, March 2019. Whereas more than 137 years ago, the American Red Cross was established as a humanitarian organization guided by seven fundamental principles, including humanity, impartiality, independence, to provide services to those in need regardless of race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, or citizenship. Who's receiving them? I think, are you? Oh, come on up here. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, come on up here. Come on up. Okay, we got. Thank you. What's your name? Erica Presto. Erica? Pleasure. Erica, talk to us about the program here. Well, let me, let me finish. Oh. We're almost there. It's a long one, okay. Uh, every year, American Red Cross responds to average of more than 62,000 disasters across the country, from small home fires to devastating uh, massive disasters. Thousands of American Red Cross volunteers provide around-the-clock shelter for disaster victims, uh, severe, several millions of meals, snacks with partners, and distributive millions of relief items. March is Red Cross Month, a special time to recognize and thank the Red Cross volunteers and donors who give their time and resources to help members of the community. We applaud our heroes here in the San Gabriel Valley chapter who give of themselves to assist their neighbors when they need a helping hand. The American Red Cross shelter feeds and provides emotional support to victims of disasters, supplies about 40% of the nation's blood, teaches skills that save lives, provides international humanitarian aid, and supports military members and their families. In Los Angeles, the Red Cross has a long history of helping their, our neighbors in need and handles an average of 3,000 emergency military calls every year and collects an average of 147,531 whole units of blood from generous blood donors. We dedicate the month of March to all those who support the American Red Cross mission to prevent and alleviate human suffering in the face of emergencies. Our community depends on the American Red Cross, which relies on volunteers and the generosity of the public to perform its mission. Now, therefore, uh, the Mayor, Mayor Lozano, of the city of Baldwin Park, along with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Monica Garcia, Council Members Alejandra Avila, Paul Hernandez, Ricardo Pacheco, our city treasurer Maria Contreras, our city clerk Jean Ayala, do by hereby proclaim March 2019 as the Red Cross Month in the city of Baldwin Park, and in doing so, we encourage all Americans to support this organization and its noble humanitarian mission. Thank you. Um, good evening. I'd like to thank the mayor and city council and the community of Baldwin Park for recognizing March as Red Cross Month. Especially in March, I'd like to um, remind the public to please uh, support the American Red Cross by donating your time and volunteering, uh, donating blood, of course, and also donating um, funds as well to the American Red Cross. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> <you>. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Okay. All right, carry on. All right, the next one that we have certificates recognizing service to high school soccer team, CIF, and state title. So I wanna first of all thank thank you for being here today. When I spoke to the coach during the weekday, I guess in May you're going to have the actual uh, ceremony which includes the ring as well, so we're gonna work with you in that particular fundraiser. So we're gonna get the word out to some of the various companies throughout the city of Baldwin Park as well. Uh, I think per, per student, is it $200 or what's? 235. $235, so we definitely gotta make an effort to pitch in for that as well. So at this point, let's go ahead and have a service. To, let's have you up here. Coach, you could talk about the actual program itself. Come on up here, let's bring the whole team. Let's give it a great and give it to high school.
Yes, I do. Okay, so Coach, let's have you talk to us about this this this, this journey that these young students took, and of course, it, it's big for the San Gabriel Valley, of course, uh, LA County, uh, being able to uh, be the recipients of uh, the CIF as well as the state champions. So, talk to us about that. Well, it was it was uh, an incredible journey this year. I mean. I've been coaching at Sierra Vista High School for 25 years. I'm an alumni from there. Graduated oh, in 1990. Wow. And year after year, that's our goal. We, you know, we have our mindset on taking the CAF title, bringing it over to Sierra Vista, and being the first boys team to win a title there at Sierra Vista. And we fell short for whatever reasons, you know, here and there. Made a semifinal a couple of years. Made a quarterfinals about seven, eight years. But until the game last year, we lost in the quarterfinals and penalty kicks. You know, this group was determined that this year was going to be the year. Awesome. No more losing. You know, we had the opportunity. We had all the right pieces. We were able to, you know, put them together. And they believed in each other. They worked hard day in and day out. And we finally got that title that we've been wanting for a long time. Awesome. Yay. Congratulations. So, no. Just to let, let everyone know, you guys saw the, the big billboard already? Definitely. Okay, so the city council said, let's put that big billboard up there. So if you haven't seen it, where the Harley Davidson dealerships, that's on both sides of the 10 freeway, okay? Right. So hundreds and thousands of uh, people will be able to see it. I want to also let you know that we're going to feature you in the, in the now uh, a newsletter. It goes out to all 75,000 residents. So make sure, put that big picture up there, Manny, okay? And, and then we'll dedicate that to all these young churches. I know the vast majority of you are seniors. That will be graduating. So, and, and Coach, want to also bring you and hopefully some of them are still around. They haven't gone on to college. Uh, want to recognize them at our concert, and then also have them at our at our at our parade because this, this is definitely big for us in the city of Ball Park. So, I want to thank each and every one of you. Okay, now a lot of certificates here. So, <laughs> I guess we'll give them to you, or how do you want to do this? I, I want to make it easy, and I, if I can say this, yes, sir. On behalf of the coaches and the soccer team from Sierra Vista High School. We want to thank the city of Baldwin Park. Thank we you. want to thank the city council, Mayor Lozano, for this, um, for this honor and recognizing us. I wanted to bring all the team, but, you know, just like everywhere we go, we have about 35 players on the roster. We have families and everybody. We didn't, over want, it, we didn't want to overwhelm, you know, the room and the whole thing. So what I want to do is I want to extend an invitation to everybody here awesome. in the city of Baldwin Park. Awesome. To attend our ring ceremony, which the rings are being made already, and it will be the first within the first two weeks of May. It's going to be held at our, our gym at Sierra Vista, and we're also going to unveil the banners. There, with so much space, it will have a chance for the community, for city council, for everybody to take pictures, allow more space to meet the families, to meet all the players, and g give us more space and more time. Beautiful, you know, to absolutely make it happen. Yes. I will, yes. are and I will communicate with, with yes. you, if you guys allow me, and I'll make sure that you guys get all the info and everything that we have going on. So, Manny Carrillo, we could definitely get together. So, because I know that calling about forty uh, people, I mean, is, so. you guys take them. We're going to take a photo with everyone, right? Can, definitely. Can you at least name who is here? Okay. Yes. Oh yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry. Uh, we have Robert Jimenez, who is one of our yes. uh, assistant coaches. Uh, Omar Jimenez, <laughs> so is one of our captains. Hector Gonzalez, an assistant coach. Eric Celestino, a captain. Melanie Rodriguez, who was my daughter and also helps with everything that has to do with my sports. Okay. Andrew Torres, one of our captains. Jared Jacobo, also another captain. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much for everything. Look at there. Photo here. Carrillo. Yes, this is beautiful. Let's, let's come up front, you guys. Let's see how. I'm a little taller than you, so how about
Real quick, I also want to acknowledge um, Gonzalo Vasquez. Gonzalo, thank you very much because I know some of these youth have been a part of your team. And you've done a, a phenomenal job. So yes. thank you on behalf of the City Ball and Park. Thank you. All right, then, you guys. Coach, that will mañana. Okay. So, these are right here, right? Yeah, take them. Definitely. Boy, so make time for an account because I want to recognize you. Yes, if you need the dates, definitely. Yes, that's what we're doing. We're trying to get the ring we're, now. We're doing it now because oh. the kids got it. So there's there's a total. What? How many? Co how many? There's there's 38. Okay, there's 38. So we're gonna players and coaches. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and adopt. Uh, okay. I did, I did I did, so I got you covered. So you know what? You gotta definitely ballpark high schools as well. They got the teachers and all that. You'll be able to do this. So so we're definitely gonna cover you guys as well. We'll be part of it. Definitely. So Lance, go ahead. Thank you, Mirror. I appreciate that. I will also cover uh, one of the students. I'll let them decide yes. who that is. Um, so I'd actually ask for the rest of the council and anybody else uh, that can help support these uh, young individuals on their accomplishment uh, would be certainly satisfactory to, to them and their families. Great, Paul. Great idea, Councilman Hernandez. And I'll join you in that same effort. We'll all join. Yes. Okay, oh, what? Okay, so everyone's adopting one? All right. Yes. We're adopting. So you got the whole city concept, okay? All right. Okay, thank, thank, thank you. Guys. You. Yeah, so you okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, real Mayor, quick, just really wanna, quick. Huh? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I also want to pledge to adopt uh, a player. But I also want to just really call out the dedication from uh, Coach Jose Rodriguez. Yes. Having been a product of this community and then coming back and giving to our youth. Um, I love seeing that. It's just something that we really need to celebrate. So I want to celebrate what the team has accomplished, every one of you, and I want to celebrate, Coach, you know, your, your story and what you've given to our community as well. Thank you. Now, do we have a big, sorry about that, do we have a, a big banner? You guys like the picture? We used to do that before. No? This time around? Uh, they gave me kind of like what you guys posted on the billboard. Okay. It's a pretty big size. Oh, you guys have one? Okay. I just wanted to make certain. All right, thank you very much. All right, so at this at this point, before I open up uh, communication, I want to also thank um, uh, Mr. David Olivas, uh, who is currently substituting for Mr. Robert Tofoya. Just to let everyone know, Mr. Uh, David Olivas um, was a former cons member, City of Ball Park, and actually began here as an attorney in 1992, during Fidel Vargas, uh, uh, when he first was elected as the youngest 23-year-old uh, attorney. Uh, 1992, believe it or not, I was also part of the city. <laughs> How times have changed. So I want to thank you very much. Thank and you. also a graduate from Harvard. So there you go. All right. And a mentor, I forgot. And a mentor. All right, so at this point. Oh, we have two more? Oh, boy. Okay, I was getting ready to go to Via Mar. All right. All right, so here we go. So the next one we have is a choice. Uh, so the energy implementation plan and, and statement. I have intent presentation. Who's handling this? Uh, Mayor, we'll have uh, Barbara Boswell from CalChoice here. We'll give oh, you awesome. a short Thank presentation. You. Go restroom real quick. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Forward. Good evening, Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem and Council Members. <coughs> I am Barbara Boswell from California Choice Energy Authority. It's my pleasure to be here to present to you um, where we currently are with regards to the proposed Baldwin Park Community Choice Aggregation Program and the proposed next steps. So just uh, take a moment to uh, refresh on what Cal Community Choice Aggregation is and how it works. In a traditional uh, utility setting for electricity, the utility, whether it's uh, investor-owned utility such as Southern California Edison or a municipal utility, all of the um, functions with regarding the delivery of energy such as 
sourcing and buying the energy and then delivering it to the customer for their use is handled by the utility. In a community choice aggregation program, the sourcing or the uh, purchasing of the generation power from the energy suppliers is managed and handled by the community choice aggregation program. The energy is still delivered by the utility, in our case, Southern California Edison. They continue to be responsible for uh, the infrastructure. There are no uh, infrastructure purchases to be made by this Community Choice Aggregation Program, or CCA. The utility continues to be responsible for uh, blackouts, if a customer's power isn't working, if a pole is hit. Uh, any disruptions in power or maintenance of the infrastructure remains with the utility. The customer still receives just one bill, uh, and the bill would include the charges for both the utility delivery as well as the community choice aggregation charges for the generation portion. The customer continues to contact the utility to set up service, to move, to discontinue service. Uh, in terms of uh, the program statewide, uh, there is, uh, has been a number of programs that have launched since Baldwin Park began looking into community choice aggregation programs. Uh, there are approximately 20 uh, programs statewide, and uh, there may even be, there's at least one that is missing from this uh, chart. Uh, but they represent over 100 cities uh, throughout California. Northern California uh, is generally organized as joint powers authorities with many cities creating one agency. Southern California is a bit more unique in that there are many cities who have chosen to set up an enterprise uh, fund CCA program and uh, run the program locally. Uh, and we do have a Clean Power Alliance who is the Los Angeles County program that is currently at, I think, 33 cities at this point, um, almost all of Ventura County and um, quite a number of LA County or cities within LA County have joined them. Uh, California Choice Energy uh, Authority or CalChoice currently has five members. We are a uh, what we call a hybrid JPA model. So cities will establish their own CCA. The CCA is uh, locally controlled and operated in terms of the, um, the board, if you will, is the local city council. The city council sets the rates. They uh, determine the priorities and the programs for the community that best fits your community in terms of rate savings, renewable energy in the portfolio. And then contract uh, through the JPA with CalChoice to provide administrative support and services and for joint procurement. And re that really does benefit the programs in uh, reducing costs and reducing impact on staffs, where a community or a city can launch a CCA with very little staff impact because we're working together um, in the back end. Our current members are the cities of uh, Apple Valley, uh, Pico Rivera, San Jacinto, Rancho Mirage, and Lancaster. And they all have their own programs. They all uh, have established their own um, rates, their own savings to their customers, and um, any programs. We're also currently working with another six cities, um, and they're all in the same um, place as uh, Baldwin Park in terms of evaluating, setting up their CCA. And in addition to Baldwin Park, those cities are Commerce, Hanford, Palmdale, Pomona, and Santa Paula. Uh, Baldwin Park has been uh, looking at and evaluating community choice aggregation for some time. In uh, 2017, they initiated a technical study through uh, CalChoice to uh, have the energy usage evaluated and a financial pro forma developed to see if it would be financially feasible to uh, start up and operate a CCA in Baldwin Park. Um, the results of that study were favorable, and as a result, we moved forward and developed the implementation plan, which was adopted in November of 2018 and subsequently filed with the California Public Utilities Commission for certification. 
I'm pleased to say that that um, implementation has now been certified by the California Public Utilities Commission. And that is the one formal step that a city or CCA takes to, uh, with the Public Utilities Commission to establish a CCA. Uh, so some of the benefits of, uh, you know, why, why would we want to do this uh, are that it um, brings the uh, rate setting and the um, decision making in terms of the types of energy and mixes of energy um, local. Customers can um, come and uh, have a, have a uh, I guess, a better say in their generation portion of their bill in terms of their rates. It's a new revenue stream to the city. The net revenues, instead of going to a utility, a corporation would be stay within Baldwin Park, and the council would then have the discretion to determine how those revenues should be used to best meet the needs and priorities of the community. Um, it, we also uh, did uh, prepare the pro formas to provide rate savings to the community, and uh, with the current uh, market, we uh, estimate that that savings to the community would be $2 million over uh, 10 years. Um, so we prepared the initial, uh, an initial study and updated that study in uh, September of 2018. And again, in February 2019, as, as you can imagine, uh, the price of energy, it's a market-based commodity. The pricing does change. Southern California Edison rates change. And so the pro forma uh, does change uh, over time. And we monitor that closely. And we're presenting here uh, the results of the last two studies that were completed in September 2018 and then again in February 2019. Uh, the blue uh, bar is the 2018 version and the orange bar 2019, uh, that the net surplus or the, the operating margin, which is the net, the revenues minus those costs that are considered non-discretionary, for example, the largest expense in a CCA is the cost of power. So if we back out the cost of power and uh, other non-discretionary expenses, the operating margin does reflect that the um, CCA does operate in a strong financial um, position. 2020, um, because we would be launching with just uh, a short period of operations in fiscal year 2020 with one with uh, no revenues but incurring the cost of launching. Of course, that shows a, a negative, but then that's quickly made up in future years. In terms of uh, the net surplus and reserves that are accumulated by the CCA in operations, the blue bar represents the net surplus, or in this case, there were um, some years of negatives or, or net losses, um, has actually improved it with the updated pro formas. So the orange bar is the uh, net surplus generated uh, from the current launch date, and then the gray bar is the accumulation of reserves um, over time. We are currently looking at and proposing a two-phased approach to the Baldwin Park CCA launch, uh, which would be launching the residential and city municipal accounts in September of 2020, followed by the commercial accounts in May of 2021. And, and this seems to be um, the best uh, approach in terms of cash flow and uh, funds and revenues generated um, in a shorter amount of time. To start up the CCA, there are upfront costs that are needed. There are approximately 350,000 in what we would consider required costs. Those include uh, depositing $100,000 with the California Public Utilities Commission. They require uh, what they call a bond to be posted, although it's a, a cash payment, which we would need to make this month. Um, then there's also a proposed uh, second agreement uh, phase two with California Choice Energy Authority to provide implementation services to Baldwin Park to pre perform all of the functions required to uh, bring the Baldwin Park CCA to fruition. That uh, 160,000, the, the services uh, go through 
uh, April 2019 through the launch date with the um, payment period running from April through January. The PUC uh, has been considering increasing the bond, the CCA bond requirement. While we're currently required to post 100000 it is expected that that bond amount would um, increase by another 50000 in the summer of 2019. But at this point in time, the PUC does not have a date or a final decision with regards um, to that bond, but we include it here to be um, conservative and ensure we're including all potential costs. Um, when we were um, evaluating the uh, startup costs um, earlier in this year, we were looking at um, having to incur costs related to an, uh, what's called resource adequacy. That is um, generally what we talk, think about in terms of an insurance policy that pays uh, the power plants that aren't currently producing to stay on standby in case in events where it gets hot and everyone's turning on the air conditioners and the, uh, the CAISO needs to call on the power plant, they're, they're at the ready. Uh, in our pro forma we had done earlier this year, we had estimated there to be costs, but by doing the two-phase approach, we've actually eliminated that cost, so we're showing that as zero. There would be $40,000 in required noticing to the customers that are affected, and then they, we do estimate also that there are 185000 of discretionary costs which could go towards staff reimbursements, any other community outreach that the council uh, would like to see, or other types of um, activities um, at, um, at the discretion. Um, in addition, there, um, when we uh, go out and contract with energy suppliers, we uh, work to ensure that the city's general funds are protected and that the suppliers cannot come and uh, negatively impact the general fund by requiring the city to pledge their general funds in the event the CCA doesn't generate sufficient revenues to cover the costs. Um, in order to get those protections, the suppliers do um, seek to have a separate bank account set up where the revenues that are collected from the customers are put into, and that's they have first dibs or first um, the first disbursements out of that fund. And they do look to, um, our experience has been that they do look to have that, that bank account have an initial deposit made. It is the city, would remain the city of Baldwin Park's money in an account in the city of Baldwin Park's name, but it is the insurance policy for the energy suppliers that there is money there in the very beginning. Over time, as the, as the contracts go, move forward, the amount that's required decreases, and those funds can be released back. And we're currently estimating uh, the, that initial deposit to be between 250000 and 500000 That deposit would not need to be made uh, until closer towards the end of the year, and we would know what that amount is by the time that um, that would be needed. Um, so actions that are um, being proposed to the council tonight include uh, introducing the Baldwin Park CCA ordinance. The ordinance uh, establishes Baldwin Park's intent to establish a CCA program and is required by the California Public Utilities Commission. Uh, and then we talked about the CCA bond where we're seeking approval for the council to uh, approve the <laughs> deposit with the PUC. And the purpose of the money is to um, provide funds should the uh, CCA program uh, cease to exist and there be a mass return of all of their customers to Southern California Edison in, in one fell swoop, SE would seek those funds to recover their administrative costs. Um, the likelihood of that happening are, um, are, I think, not very big and that's why the amount of money is uh, uh, the amount that it is, but that is the purpose of that, of those funds. Uh, there is a Southern California Edison service agreement. Southern California Edison provides services to the CCA, which includes 
of the billing, as we talked about, uh, meter reading, maintaining customer information. So there is an, an agreement that is to be executed between uh, the city of Baldwin Park and Southern California Edison. And the signed agreement is then submitted to the um, Public Utilities Commission along with the $100,000 payment. And that satisfies all of the requirements, uh, including the certified implementation plan to register to operate as a CCA. And uh, as mentioned earlier, California Choice Energy Authority also um, up is proposed for Baldwin Park City Council to consider awarding a contract to provide implementation services, which includes all steps to ensure a successful, successful launch, including regulatory and operational um, activities. We have su successfully launched um, four CCAs in Southern California Edison Territory, and those activities would begin um, in April 2019. And uh, this is a recap of the items um, that are before you. I do want to stress that while there are a number of actions that are being requested of council, this does not commit Baldwin Park to establishing and operating a CCA. These are the next steps in the process. Should the uh, market conditions change to where the CCA would not be financially feasible, should other priorities change where the council would decide that moving forward uh, didn't meet your goals and objectives. You still have that opportunity to, uh, to not operate the CCA. You're not fully committed to operate until you've actually executed energy contracts. So these steps continue the process and we will continue to evaluate the market conditions, we will continue to bring forward updates to the financial pro forma as we continue to move forward through 2019 and early 2020, but these are the next steps to continue in the, in the process of moving down the, the path. Uh, next steps would be uh, in April, the second reading and adoption of the ordinance, and then uh, we would uh, be proposing to bring forward the resolution to join California Choice Energy Authority next month. And included with that are the various agreements and documents that provide the working relationship between California Choice Energy Authority and also establishes the provisions to ensure the protections to the city's general funds um, should we then move forward and execute uh, energy contracts. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have. All right, thank Mayor, you. Mayor, if I... Yes, Councilman Ricardo Pacheco, go ahead. I want to thank you for the great presentation uh, that you gave here. And um, I've been a very strong supporter of the Community Choice Program. I think it's uh, very beneficial to our residents, our business owners, and our community. I see a lot of positive benefits. Can you move over to the slide where you showed the, the benefits, which I think was almost uh, at the beginning? Uh, and... Um, I think that what it offers, and just to have the community understand, is it's the local control that the city council will be able to control the rates and the operation of the, of the uh, CCA. Uh, it creates a new revenue stream. So we could do a lot of energy projects throughout our community, uh, electric car stations, uh, electric buses, and there's just so much you can do with it that will really uh, enhance uh, the city of Ball Park and, and how, helping us uh, just improve our revenue stream. Uh, the rate savings to the community and to businesses, I think, will be uh, a plus for all of us to win. And I think, you know, Ballon Park has been on the on the edge of, cutting edge of moving uh, new revenue streams into the city. This is another program that we can uh, offer our community that will benefit not only the city facilities, but also the residents uh, that we represent. And I think that it's something that we should definitely look into. I know a lot of communities, uh, Pico Rivera and other cities, Palmdale have been doing this for a, a few years and it's extremely positive from what I'm hearing uh, from their experience. So I think Ballon Park should uh, continue to move forward. But with that, I did have one question. And what would be the impact uh, to solar energy contracts with, NC, with, with SCE? So if you have solar on your roof, and you're a resident, uh, does that improve that agreement with, with Edison or 
or can we make it more appealing because you know we're, we are now the CCA yeah uh, that's a, a very good question and um, if I can go back to this before I answer that go back here I think something that I realize now is missing from that is that another benefit is choice hmm. if a customer decides they would prefer not to participate they can opt out and stay with Southern California Edison so my presentation was missing I think a pretty important point which is the uh, offering customers now a choice which they don't currently have with regards to uh, rooftop solar um, traditionally the um, CCAs that have launched that our associate members have actually provided a greater benefit to the customers with solar um, if you have a, a solar program that generates more energy than you use, um, customers are eligible to receive a, a payment, and the payments are the repayment is on a per kilowatt hour basis, and that rate is set by the respective city councils. It would be set by the city of Baldwin Park. All of our operating associate members have chosen to uh, offer a higher. Um, rebate or, mm. or payment for their surplus compensation or their surplus <coughs> energy and so it has been a benefit to uh, solar customers in addition the rates that our associate members charge for usage is lower than Southern California Edison so if the solar customers rooftop solar doesn't generate enough they're buying energy at a lower rate mm. so it, do, it is a benefit or it has been a benefit. Very well. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Councilmember yeah. Pacheco, Vice Mayor Monica Garcia. So I, um, I, I do believe that SE offers uh, reduced programs to those who qualify, and so I'm wondering what the JPA, what that would look like. Who sets the rates, and what do those programs look like? Okay, so you're referring to the uh, CARE program, which is, and also Medical Baseline, which are special programs for um, customers who meet certain requirements. And they continue to be eligible for those programs offered by Southern California Edison. There's no impact or loss to them by participating. Mm -hmm. And should the Baldwin Park City Council choose to set rates that are lower than Southern California Edison, they'd be receiving an, an additional benefit of a lower rate on the generation side. But nothing changes with regards to their discounts that they currently receive. They continue to see, receive the same amount of discount that they have now. And they would receive it through SCE or through Correct. the JPA? They receive it through SCE. Okay. But the discount is on the delivery side of the bill um, today and remains on that side of the bill. Okay. Good. Thanks. All right, thank you very much, Vice Mayor uh, Monica Garcia. Mr. Uh, Mayor? This Council Member Paul Hernandez. Uh, this program is very intriguing. Um, I do like the ability for the council to be able to set uh, some very, hopefully, aggressive uh, renewal energy standards. Um, just out of your curiosity and your experience, uh, do local cities, are they able to set higher renewable rates um, than SEE? Or does that affect the, the bottom line? So there are um, different approaches that the council will have available to it. Um, our uh, current associate members um, all uh, also uh, have a similar desire to increase the amount of renewable energy being used in the community. Um, there are um, different uh, energy products that you can buy that don't necessarily increase the cost of power that much, but does increase, it, it helps to make the community more green. They all also offer an optional 100% renewable energy product that a customer can opt up to. There is an additional rate, but it is um, fairly small uh, with regards. But it's something that if a, your customers, if that's an important um, to them, they can choose to opt up to, but you're not. If you were to offer all of your customers 100% renewable, your pricing may not be competitive or lower than Southern California Edison, which is the reason other CCAs um, do you have a um, voluntary opt up. Pico Rivera, uh, uh, they purchase 50% renewable as their default, wow. and I think Southern California Edison is close to 30%. So. They do have a higher renewable standard than Southern California Edison. That's terrific. 
Um, I mean, the vision would be, of course, to have uh, multiple solar panels on everyone's home. And of course, for us to possibly offer incentive programs for individuals to be able to purchase those uh, for themselves. And of course, electrical cars, uh, the chargers at the homes and so forth. Um, but I also do want to, you know, make sure we plant a seed uh, with our commercial users. Uh, that said, you know, we have some, mo some folks uh, from the water district here. So think about this. Um, as they're using it for your plants, but also for uh, our health care uh, providers on the commercial side because they tend to be some of the largest uh, users, at least on the water side. So I suspect it'd be the same uh, similar situation on the uh, electricity. Thank you. Right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, anyone else? Okay, if not, thank you very much. And I believe the actual items on, on the actual um, consent calendar. All right, so at this point we have um, another one. We have the California Consulting Inc. Uh, presentation. Who's handling uh, this? David is here to give us a update on the grant program. Uh, excuse me, I just had a question yes, on the, go, on the go last ahead, presentation for yes. the city manager. Wait, hold, hold on. What about for the I, I, For the city manager on the last presentation. So what, what happens from here? They did a presentation. Does some resolutions come to the next council meeting? Um, yeah, there'll be a second reading of this. Um, and I think if, if we go back to the PowerPoint, there was a couple follow-up items that will be coming okay. to you over the months um, to okay. finalize this and eventually then to set the rates. All right. Thank you very much. My understanding is very beneficial for the cities that okay. actually have, have been part of I want of to get on my solar skateboard and Absolutely. skate down the street. All right. Thank you. I'm there with you. Uh, We'll do that in the 5K coming up. All right, so at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and have the um, California Consultant Inc. presentation. So we could, it's not going to be super long, is it? This should be five minutes. Okay, about five minutes. I'll keep it Thank brief. you. Good evening. Thank you, brief. Good evening, um, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council members. Thank you. Um, oh, all right. I'm not really good with the technology. Um, also, I'd like to acknowledge um, my colleague Dan. Rodriguez back there, so he helped put the presentation together. So anyways, um, and David Marquez, I'm the primary grant writer working with the city of Baldwin Park. I'd just like to explain. Um, so the primary grant writer, but when we needed, we bring other people in to, to help and provide support. And so if we can, um, just our company overview, and I think, um, I think everybody's pretty familiar, federal straight grants, private foundation grants, service, and um, staff. Oh, geez. And, and uh, I want to move to quickly. OK, here it is. I want to get here. This is the list of the, the grants that have been um, funded. Um, working directly with, with you and your staff, um, I want to take a, a point right now. Um, I want to make a point that um, it's been, it's an excellent, working with the staff here is, um, and I worked with other cities, uh, the staff is, um, it's not a matter of competence, is that they're very strategic, um, very responsive, and I think it makes our job easier, and I think we've been very effective in the sense that when, with grants, grants aren't funded based on needs, that's the assumption. It's, um, it has to deal with um, competency, are they strategic, Do this, does the city have the capacity and the know-how, and can they evaluate, can they bring it to fruition? And um, when I look at these um, proposals, I see it's not, you know, uh, not just based on need, but also the thing is that there's a lot of grants there that um, the city has not applied for before and has been funded. And I think we're at a point where we're funding grants and now we're gonna build upon the grants that we've already funded. Um, and all these grants are conformed to the, the strategic plan for the cities of Baldwin Park. And um, what I want to, uh, excuse me. And so it's, Getting back to the last previous grant, there's over been, I think we funded it, so it's, we're over a million dollars now in terms of um, grants funded, okay? But it's again, it's not about the monies, it's about what these grants do over the long term and how it benefits in the short term and the long term for the city of Baldwin Park. And being forward thinking that right now we're looking at the next six months of grant opportunities very important, the state of California, the statewide park program, this is a large, we're looking at funding um, two projects, the, the dog park, um, Morgan Park, and um, the community center expansion of the, 
uh, community center, Morgan Park, and the dog park at Barnes Park. And these grants are up to $6 million a piece. So we've been planning for the last month on this grant that's due in August. So again, uh, the EDA planning grant with the um, Community Development Department, and that's a $300,000 grant, but we're looking at leveraging that so we have a multi-million dollar grant in um, um, economic development project there we've been working with and um, the, right now I've got on my table I just was on a hour-long conference call with um, the life program and with Helen from city of Baldwin Park on the youth reinvestment grant program to serve youth 14 to 22 a lot of these are out of school youth and providing a mentoring program educational skills um, life skills education, get your GED, graduate, um, help get um, financial assistance, you can, um, employment, and um, get to college, and um, provide other supportive services that can, um, in the long run, provide um, independence for the, for the youth. We're also looking at, right now, the, the California Highway Safety Improvement Grant, which is the HSIP. We got assist, we have a, we just finished, I think, Sam, we just finished with the Systemic Analysis Report Program, and that provided us um, the, the documentation, the report, the analysis that we need so we can apply for the HSIP and reduce collisions, save lives, the Environmental Mitigation Grant, another park grant that we're looking for, and I'm looking for this one for Big Dalton Wash, SB2 Housing Planning Grants. It hasn't been announced, but we've been preparing for these grants as well with staff. Um, LA County Home for Good, as you know, the city of Baldwin Park has been a recipient of, um, I think it's got over a couple hundred thousand, almost $300,000 in grants with homeless implementation grants. And uh, the Measure A funding of opportunities with the county and doing, a dent, again, park expansion and park improvements and then overall the, you know, the greening of um, Baldwin Park. So I try to get that under five minutes, man. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. That's good. Anyone have any, any questions? questions? Uh, yes, so Mayor. I have a question. Uh, I, so I just want to thank you for all the work you guys have done. And I know that the uh, the rate of investment that we've had for paying your firm to be here, I, I mean, we're getting you know, well over thousands of dollars for all of our grants is really, you know, a great payoff. But more than that, like you say, it's the benefit that we uh, receive in the long run. So I think that's great. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. And that's part of um, looking at these grant opportunities strategically. Not everything that comes through, we say, hey, let's do it. You know, we're a community of need. It's not about that. I don't think we even think in those terms is that, um, you know, we're funding electric. You got the um, electrical vehicle charging station for staff. And now we're going to get funded by SCAG to do electrical vehicle charging stations and the planning grant mm -hmm. so it's that forward thinking and so we're kind of building on top of each other and that comes from the input that I need from staff it's not all in my head and it's not all what you know the research I do I, I, I depend on a lot of input from staff and that collaboration so it's a collaborative effort let me just tell you I appreciate your approach I know that when you go to other cities everyone expects the grant writers to get the grants and put them in and you're expected to deliver but it's really your team approach that I like to watch the strategy that it's your grant writers working with our staff and you know having our staff come up with what are the needs you know and or the council members at times and we tell you what our needs are and then you guys go and look for the grants and start writing them up and, and that's just, it's a whole different approach rather than just depending on their grant writers to come through and I think you do that no, can, I, can I see your awards though again I want to go back to that award uh, chart yeah Let's see if I can yeah. all right here we go. So the, you're saying that these are all the awards? Yeah, these are the these are the awards, and um, as we just received one with um, with SCAG Sustainable Communities Program, which will fund the planning for six vehicle electric vehicle charging stations. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the amount is. Um, there's follow up on there, but we did get that award. God, we applied for it in. Um, in December, and that's something that um, you know your public works and other departments were really focused on. So we put that together again, a team effort, um, and that kind of goes hand in hand with the the mobile source reduction review committee grant, mm -hmm. also, which is um, 
which is electrical vehicle charging station also in, um, but this is for your city vehicles and that's at the public works yard. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got the, the homeless implementation grants there. Um, again, that was all a strong collaborative effort and I know that mm -hmm. was identified as a need. So I, I really wanna emphasize it's not about yeah, it's a lot of money that we've we've gained and stuff, but it's about being strategic that I think we look at this and it's not funded. Yeah, there's need, but we really look at these grants building on top of previous projects. Right. Walnut Park was a very solid project. There was a lot of great work done on it. And because of the success, I could, you know, as a grant writer, I can say, in you know in the in the writing i said because we were able to finish this large project this proves that we can do these other projects and grants are incredibly competitive now and i'm not and and that's the way it's it's been for a while and you know it's it's not based on hey we're a disadvantaged community and we don't approach baldwin park as a disadvantaged community we approach it as there's a lot of good work being done let's try to build on it that's the way we look at it and be kind of forward thinking there. Now, these are grants that we've already received? Yeah, yeah, and we've got some in the pipeline right now. So we're waiting to hear. It takes about maybe three or four months, sometimes only two months. Sometimes it takes like mm -hmm. about four or five months to hear from some now, grants. These grants are just state grants and county grants? or what, No, what they're are they? actually they're federal, state, and county. Oh, okay. And then you have SCAG, which is, mm -hmm. you know, an MPO. So, um, okay. Kind of a hybrid. Very well. So it's 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 an array, but we've got a more in the pipeline, and we've okay. got more. To, to All work. right, and I appreciate your coming here and updating us uh, on this. And I appreciate your emails. I know you're always sending emails, and it you know reminds me of the work you guys are well, doing. It's communication. <laughs> I need the I need the feedback, and so I appreciate that. So again, thank you for the work you guys have done, and I want to thank uh, opportunity to thank staff too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, that, that ends the, the Mr. Action. Mayor? Yes. Uh, I just have member. a quick question. Go ahead. Excuse us. Um, for the grants that you showed, uh, a lot of those are, like you said, state and federal. What about... Uh, state. Exactly. Uh, what about uh, the grants, the, privates, the private foundation grants? Uh, what are your efforts on, on some of those, specifically in and around the homelessness? We have... And also we the actually, public safety? We have... Well, the CHAMPS... Well, that's not a private foundation grant. The private foundation grants are very difficult. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't look at them. In fact, when I sent, I think I sent a grants list out yesterday, um, I include foundation grants. In fact, there's a couple foundation grants that we've identified for parks and recs for the dance program. They're not gonna be out until maybe July and August, but, the, but um, Manny staff has already identified some foundation grants. They just haven't been released there um, yet. So. We've identified some. It's generally more challenging for municipalities to apply for foundations, um, being eligible. But we, but we, but there are some, and we'll continue to apply when appropriate, because um, you compete against nonprofit organizations. But um, there's public-private partnerships. Um, I know within the city, so we're not discounting them. But hopefully, we'll we'll land a few, and I think it'll probably be more on the. Most foundation grants are not going to usually come through economic development, but we'll probably hopefully on the recreation and community service side will be most likely. So we have been looking at them, and there's about three or four that we've targeted, but they're not going to be released until July, August, September, and they're mostly for recreation. I appreciate that. I'd also ask if you could look at for the public safety side. Um, Target Foundation has an ongoing uh, grant program. Uh, Motorola. Motorola is very specific to the regions, um, but those are some examples. Uh, same with Lowe's and Home Depot. They also have their private foundations, and they do give to municipalities specifically to the private sector, uh, public sector. They public do, they do. Sector. And I know Lowe's has a grant that's up to 25 and Home Depot around right. 10. So I just want to make sure that we're, it's on our radar and that we're looking towards that in a strategic and long-term way. Okay. Please. Thank and you. We, we, they're on, those grants are on the list that I sent, the grants that you mentioned. They're on the list um, that I send out whenever on a regular basis. So those, I think probably everything except the target grant, maybe the target grant is on there, but the, everything except maybe the target grant is on that list. And um, let's just develop a strategy around those. That's all no, I ask. Thank exactly. You. And um, the key thing is that um, 
you also you mentioned the police grants so we are waiting for a cops hiring grant from the u.s department of justice your police department has identified that it hasn't been released yet and um, we've applied before we've come close I, and we're going to apply again when it is released and that would be looking forward to i think potentially hiring three officers um, with that grant so um, i know that your police department has emphasized that to me so we're kind of waiting for that one to arrive but thank you for the input appreciate it all right thank you very much thank at you. this point council members all right so if not uh we'll go ahead and that's the end of the proclamation at this point we'll open up the Public communication, anyone wishing to speak, approximately three minutes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor <clears throat> Ladano and the council members. And thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm following up on the presentation that I made on, can you hear me? Oh, yes. Okay, great. Yes, so right. I'm following up on the presentation that I made uh, last week. Yes. I spoke with uh, Denise Tonatori, um regarding my book project and she asked me to make sure I come back and follow up on it so that's the purpose for me coming so I want to share just a little bit about the book project and the purpose of the book as it relates to um, creating a heart-to-heart -heart foundation to help uh, communities disadvantaged youth and young adults okay so let's begin so I am a product of Baldwin Park, um, B. Pace Education Center, and I also am a minister, um, was um, ordained after graduating from um, Baldwin Park. Um, also, I wanted to share just a little bit of why I wrote the book. Okay, so as I reflect over my life growing up in our family, it was really interesting. I'm one of 15 children with biological parents from the same mom and dad. I was born a fraternal twin, and out of all my siblings, I was the one that experienced complications at birth. My mother gave me her doctor's story that distinguished me from my siblings. Mom's doctor conveyed to my parents that I had had pyloric stenosis, and that physical challenge is extremely serious for me as an, for an infant that was not even 24 hours old. So uh, going ahead, jumping ahead, according to my parents, I was not guaranteed, guaranteed to live. So I was watched closely 24-7 days a week. And for the first 15 to 16 years of my life, they wanted to make sure that I definitely would um, survive. So apparently God had something really great in mind for me. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the reasons why I chose um, the field that I did as a result of the experiences that I experienced, not only from the story from my parents, but also as a uh, growing adult. In our family, um, family system structure, I experienced being bullied by some of the members in my families, and I recognize that bullying most often begins in the family and is continued into elementary school environments, classroom, playgrounds, after school, when walking home from school, um, in life. In my life, be bullying began in our home, like I said. So one of uh, the elementary grade students constantly follow me on the playground, seeking opportunities to bully me. Um, it's over, I'm so sorry, it's over. All right, sorry about that, but yes, just leave information about your actual book. So what I hope to accomplish yes, with this, yes, mm -hmm. thank you, sir. What I hope to accomplish with this um, project is finding ways for youth and young adults to give back, um, also to build their self-confidence uh, to also pursue their education. And like I said, I'm looking forward to create and organize a nonprofit organization. I already am working on it called Heart to Heart Foundations, which will definitely help the underserved, underprivileged, and economically disadvantaged individuals. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. God that. Bless. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Move along with public communication. Hello, City Council, residents of Baldwin Park. On your item number 12, um, why are you people going to approve the highest tow truck company in, in the San Gabriel Valley? I know. You, you, and you, and you, and all of you guys up here, uh, ladies. 
Are you guys getting a kickback? $1,000 to tow your truck away for one day. Okay, 900 some dollars. That's ridiculous. You know, each American has the right mayor to, if my car's going to be towed away, I should have the privilege to use who I wish, not who you wish. You're doing it because you're getting a kickback. Somebody is. I know. Keep looking around because you're bound to get caught sooner or later. Thousand dollars. Next time, Mayor, you park somewhere and you park illegal, I'm going to call them. Hey, the Roach Wagon, go pick up the mayor's car. Because, man, you're going to make $1,000 off of them. Oh, but the city will get a kickback. That's all right, Mayor. I know you guys don't think so, but it is. You know, this agenda, I don't know what you guys dream of, but you don't. Stuff on here, you guys have more information than this piece of trash. You know what people do with this? They throw it in the trash. Because what you people read, we don't read. I noticed that all of you are looking on your computer while somebody's expressing their opinion. All these people that come and want to give you these new CC whatever, you guys are spending thousands and then up to millions of dollars on every time they come. And you people, yeah, let's vote them in. We pay tons of money all year for city utilities, city everything, and you people just keep on throwing it at us. Oh, I forgot. This is the richest neighborhood in the world. That's why you're going to approve Royal Coach. Not because they're the most efficient, but because they're the most expensive. And because this city is so full of money that you guys are just throwing it away, Number one, none of you have to pay it back. That's the biggest problem. I know, keep looking at me, because I'll be here till the day I die. You people cannot do this. There's other companies out there that are cheaper, do the same efficient work, but no, you guys want these guys. I hope you're getting a great kickback, because that way we can catch you. But you people just don't care. Every time somebody... All right, oh thank you very God. much. Appreciate that. Sorry, dude. All right, move along. Thank you. Good evening. Our awesome librarian is here tonight. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, uh, staff, and residents of Baldwin Park. Christina Larios, Library Manager at the Baldwin Park Library. have a few announcements. Um, first off, next Tuesday, I'd like to invite everybody to the Terry G. Terry G. Mew Center for our uh, celebration for National Reading Month. Uh, the library will be there with a variety of activities and um, story time, and we'll have some staff there to meet uh, children and families in the community. That's this Tuesday, March 26th, the Terry Muse Center from 3.30 to 5. Also, um, coming up this Saturday, March 23rd, we have our last um, volunteer income tax assistance program from 10 to 4. That'll be there at the library. Um, for more information, please call us and we can let you know the documents that you need to bring. Um, and then also, if you can please save the date for the weekend of Friday, April 5th and Saturday, April 6th from 10 to 4. We will have our friends of the library will have their spring book sale. All proceeds from our sale go back to the library for more programs and materials for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Hope you get your voice back. Yes, thank All you. All right, thank you very much. All right, moving along. Thank you. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Soledad Cruz, and I'm a resident, resident of Baldwin Park since 1974. And I'm a member of the um, members of the library, friends of the library. Thank you. Um, I'm coming tonight to um, uh, make a special invitation for you, Mayor, mm -hmm. and for all your councils. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a, a contest, a po poetry contest for children's from uh, first grade all the way to high school age. And uh, we're planning to give in a, a three prizes for, uh, according to the age and the grades. And it will be, uh, um, uh, it will be cash 
uh, for them and also an award for everybody who take part in the presentation. I just want to share with you guys that I've been an uh, ambassador. I've been uh, named ambassador of the un universal ambassador from the government of the Tarija, Bolivia since 19, uh, 2015. And also recently I was in Spain, which I got uh, also, uh, um, uh, they gave me a, um, as an ambassador of the peace. And this was uh, given to me for the government of uh, Paris, uh, France. And uh, tonight, I just want to uh, share with you that um, I am still um, involved with the poetry, and I've been traveled all over the world. And uh, I would like to uh, request a flag from Baldwin Park, because everywhere I go, I always mention my city and my uh, country, which is um, here, Baldwin Park in the United States also. I always carry my flags from my United States and also from Mexico, which I'm, I was born. So I appreciate if you can uh, lend it to me, a flag from Baldwin Park, and also if you can uh, um, honor us with your presence at the date of the uh, presentation of the contest for the poetry of the kids. It will be Saturday, April 13, at, uh, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it will be in the library of here at Baldwin Park. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. And Manny Carrillo, we could follow up with one of our famous flags. Thank you. Gracias. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. All right. At this point, uh, we're moving on. Okay. We have Ms. Vettel Lopez. Thank you. Good evening, Good evening Mayor, Council, and audience um, in attendance. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the soccer yes. uh, service, the soccer team. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Great to bring pride to our community. Um, I'm here to remind um, the community. I will, first of all, I would like to thank Parks and Recs for partnering with our office, mm -hmm. Office of Assemblywoman Blanca Rubio, awesome. and with the Office of Senator Susan Rubio to bring the wings um, event this Saturday, the 23rd, at our Esther Schneider Community Center. Um, the wings is a women's um, inspiring next, the next generation of sisterhood. So we'd like to um, invite the community and please encourage our young ladies in the community to attend. Um, there will be um, some breakout sessions, um, social media, branding, the do's and don'ts for our young ladies, um, table etiquette, you know, how to use your forks, uh, financial literacy, which is something that's very important, especially for our young generation right now, as far as there's so many credit cards, so many credit card debt, especially to get them ready for college. Exactly. Um, Expenses. And most importantly, our domestic violence awareness seminar as well as healthy relationships, um, the do's and don'ts, and when to say no. Okay. So, um, again, thank you so much for your time. And again, please encourage our community, our young, young ladies, to attend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, moving on with public communication. Good evening. Everybody, my name is Rosario Nava, and I am the parent for Edson Gutierrez. He's a child with disabilities. And my question is that I feel that we have a lack of platform for the children to become mainstream with community. So I want to know what we have to do to create a universal playground for the children, for all the children of the community. Um, like I said, my son is has disabilities. He's wheelchair bound, and he and he suffers from. Um, Global delays. So, although he's nine years old, he does function as a 24 month old. So, I want to create a platform where all the children are invited to interact with each other rather than me going out and having a hard time getting them through the grass or having people, not just kids, but grown adults, look at my child because he looks different. So if we encourage their presence on the playground, it'll encourage people to interact with them in a more civil way. So please, can we make a adaptable equipment playground for all the kids to enjoy? All right, thank you very much. And I just wanted to know, Manny, we could kind of follow up on that. I know that we have incorporated some, uh, some of the apparatus, uh, the um, um, things and so on and so forth, but um, Deanna Robles, that's right behind you, she's uh, newly elected to the Baum Park Unified School District. She herself also has, 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 a, has a young son uh, with disabilities, and she also created a baseball uh, team that I'm not certain if it's still going on, that for individuals that are at a disadvantage, because they are part of our population. 
and as we stated before, we cannot have them hidden behind closed doors because they are a part of our society. So we'll do whatever we can in the meantime, but as well, work in conjunction with the Ball Park Unified School District as well. Yes, so. actually, I brought it up to their attention, oh, and I good. know that they have sent us staff members to Sacramento to evaluate what needs to be done in the schools of Baldwin Park to make them adaptable for all children. Absolutely, and then uh, and then uh, uh, Veronica Lopez, the individual that works representative in the back, uh, she works for our state assembly member Blanca Rubio, and of course also the contact that we have our senator uh, uh, Susan Rubio. So we've been lucky that we have two individuals from Baldwin Park that have a vested interest. Of course, course throughout the entire district but because they know Baldwin Park so let's see how we could work in conjunction with you as well thank All you right? and I do appreciate the upgrades if to you can leave your live information with our with our city uh, city treasurer okay to get a hold of you okay. all right thank you very much moving along with public communication give me a translator please mm -hmm. Senor Pacheco, welcome back. Una de las cosas que quiero hablar ahora en la noche. One of the things that I want to discuss tonight. Es el housing para la comunidad, el rent control que muchas personas corrieron en eso, el rent control. No tenemos rent control y en la vecindad, no nomás mía, pero en otras wants to speak about the housing um, crisis and rent control. There's no rent control in the city of Baldwin Park. He referenced something on the election that didn't get approved um, and wants the city to discuss. Es que los dueños de las propiedades están subiendo las rentas de mes a mes. True. Unas personas que, que viven cerca de mí les subieron casi 200 dólares en un mes. Y les dijeron que van a seguir subiendo. So property owners have been raising rent um, every month, and he gave an example on uh, one particular case where he, where the owner raised the rent two hundred dollars, and they said they were going to continue to raise rates. Una de las cosas que miré aquí que el señor Pacheco está poniendo aquí que por qué no hacemos algo aquí enfrente de, de la Del city hall. Go ahead. Um, he's referencing to the council requests by council member Pacheco for um, uh, the um, downtown area housing initiative. Una de las cosas que desde el año pasado que la señora Rubio y la señora Baca y tuvieron peleando de los Aparte, las casas que están haciendo ahí, aquí por la Ramón y, y, y Padilo. Están peleando ellas dos. ¿o? Sí, ellas dos estaban peleando. He's referencing to count, former council members who um, were fighting over the new housing program that was just built. Esas propiedades que están haciendo allí, las casas las están vendiendo a 500 mil dólares quien de aquí de Bowman Park puede pagar eso so he's referencing the new housing um, projects and uh, stating that the housing is really um, high and the community cannot afford it una de las cosas que todo el tiempo la comunidad aquí ha estado peleando por eso que tengan control de las rentas y el control también de las viventas de, de, de las casas que quieren comprar, pero todo lo que están haciendo es subiendo los precios más y más. You know, the community has been pushing for rent control and um, low income uh, housing markets. Yeah. Otra cosa que, que estamos mirando es que hay, muy, hay negocios que le están mandando el Code Enforcers para que los les den tickets. 
Um, there are a few businesses who are being called um, upon the code enforcement to receive citations. Pero hay, hay lugares, no mencionando nombres, pero hay lugares que han hecho sobre los años pardas uh, de edificios corriendo dos negocios en una licencia. There are some businesses um, that have raised their fences and have multiple businesses in that one residence without permission or without permits. Hay otros lugares que le hicieron que tumbaran las bardas de ellos, el, los negocios, porque no se lleva bien con la comunidad, con el city council. There are other property owners who have been asked to demolish their fences um, because the owners didn't get along with the community or council members. So, es lo que queremos mirar. También en, en el Walnut Creek, ahí en, en el lugar ese, pueden poner juegos como la señorita que estaba platicando ahorita. Ahí pueden poner juegos para que ahí llevan muchos handicap kids ahí. Pero no hay juegos para personas de esas. Pueden andar alrededor de este, pero no hay juegos para ellos. He suggested Walnut Creek as a possible option um, for um, for handicapped children playground. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Luna. All right, at this point, moving along with the... Oh, it isn't Mr. Javi Vargas. Yeah. Oh, director. Sorry about that. That's right. Good evening, Council. Um, Javier Vargas, president of Eastside Little League. Uh, on behalf of Bon Park Eastside Little League and the board, uh, I would like to extend an invitation to the entire city council, staff, uh, police department, and hopefully we can get maybe your, your motorhome out there with some explorers. Uh, it's going to be, and in the community also, on March 30th at 12 p.m., a uh, fun-filled day with boots, uh, the kids, uh, a couple of games, and we'll like we'll hope to see you guys there. Thank you. Right, thank you very much, Javi. Appreciate that. All right, moving on with public communication. Is Margarita going to speak? Yes. She took the long way, but that's fine. There we go. Fabian. Uh, good evening. Um, I just want to invite you. Uh, tomorrow we're having our uh, in the Baldwin Park Women's Club the scholarship fundraiser dinner, and it's uh, twenty-five dollars per person. And if you cannot attend, we you will appreciate your contributions because we are hoping to give seven scholarships of a thousand dollars to the students of Baldwin Park and Sierra Vista to go to college. So, and another thing I want to thank Sam because I've been sending him pictures of the sofas and furniture all over the city and they've been picking it up. And I sent you today one. I only saw one sofa, so it's getting better. Thank you. Thank you very much, Margarita. Appreciate that. All right, so at this point, anyone else wishing to speak? If not, I will now declare the public, communic public communication closed. All right, so, at this point, we're going to go over to the uh, consent count. So we have some. Mayor, if I could yes. just announce, oh, yes, um, right. there was a couple minor corrections put um, before you on item number yes. eight and number eleven, Got so it. that those will become part of the record. All right. So, at this point, we'll go ahead and make a motion to add those. That's my motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Any objections? See none. So move. All right. So at this point, uh, council members wishing to pull any items from consent calendars one through twelve. Yes, Mayor. I'd like to pull item four, nine, and twelve. Okay. One more, please. Four and which one? Nine and, oh, and twelve. All right. Okay. Uh, so I like to pull item number ten. All right. So there's a motion uh, to move consent. Uh, I'll go ahead and second any objection. Seeing on so move. All right. So at this point we're going to go to item number four, which is the approval of the de design build contract with uh, uh, Conceptual Design LLC for professional services for an art and public space uh, public space project, including artwork design, uh, fabrication, and installation of sign structures and digital display. So at this point. Uh, we'll have Council Member Alejandra Avila. I just have a question uh, for Sam. I was reading on the maintenance and repair restoration that that would be res the responsibility of the city. I know we don't have um, the designs yet or we don't have anything out, 
More or less, do you have an idea how much these things will cost to fix them? And of course, it will depend on what's wrong with the, with the billboards and all that. But do you have any idea how much the city will be paying to fix these items? Uh, no, we, we haven't performed that analysis, but uh, the city will be taking on the maintenance and ownership of the public art piece. Um, if any of the public art, uh, specifically the, the art, um, is damaged or uh, in need of repair, we would have to consult with the uh, public artist to see to learn about how to repair those. So it's kind of difficult to um, estimate how much that would be, but that is included in the project. Uh, okay. I think if I could add to it, when we go through the process, we will keep maintenance and repairs in mind when we choose the materials that these items are made out of. Um, and then once those are set in stone, we'll have a better idea of, of uh, the answer to your question. Okay. And another question, uh, maybe I missed it somewhere. Is this going to be under a warranty, like maybe that the first year or two they will cover the expenses if something breaks down, or is it from the initial date once we start, is it up to us to fix it? No. Uh, there will be a one-year uh, one uh, warranty on all of the work. One-year warranty. Okay. That was all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, I just have a question on the same item. Yes, Councilman. Uh, so I was reading this item, and it says, include signs and digital marquee display. So how many signs for $616,000? Um, how many signs are we talking about? Or what, where is it located, and what exactly right. are we looking at here? So um, we are thinking um, one to three signs. It could be one, two, or three, depending on... Uh, the design of the structure and uh, the expenditure of the structures, but we're hoping to have one major marquee sign, an over the street uh, sort of sign that has a display on it, and uh, two side of the road signs if budget allows. Locations haven't been determined. Those will be brought back to council once we uh, progress in, in the design. We'll come back to council to propose uh, locations. I read the contract and I didn't see that it never stated a number of signs or that it was one structure or one location. I mean, how, how do you, how we're going to, I mean, can they just come up and say we're going to just do one sign? So um, we, we didn't add a number, but uh, there is a, um, and I can bring it uh, to, to your attention at, uh, later, but there is a, a, a section that addresses uh, the sign and or other signs. So um, I'd have to look at the contract and then c get back to you and show it to you. Okay. Uh, all right, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Mayor? Uh, yes, uh, Vice Mayor Monica Garcia. Council Member Ricardo Pacheco, do, are you, would you want to hold off on this item and bring it back once we ask additional questions? And Okay. Did I would be in support of that. You want to bring it back to another? Yeah. That's fine with me. Yeah. You want to look into more? Yeah, we can ask additional questions and bring it back to you the You mean next offline, council. not here in council? You want to ask questions? Yeah, maybe we can ask for a presentation at the next. Okay, I agree with you. That's so a let's good go. Idea. You want to go yeah. and make a mo we'll make a motion to bring that up to the following meeting? That's fine. I'll make that's my motion. Second. Second. Any objections? Seeing none, so move. All right, so then we'll go over to uh, item number six and number nine that were requested by uh, Councilmember Alejandro Avila, Ward of Contracts for the 4th of July. Uh, so at this point, yeah. Council Member? Yes. Um, so I was looking at the fact that it will be funded uh, for 20000 However, the overall cost will be fifty five. Where will we be getting the rest of that? The, for the Fourth of July program, I'll defer that to um, our finance director, Ms. Rose Tam. But I think, generally speaking, the funds will be coming out of the uh, Business Improvement District. Rose, do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Yes. Uh, every year around May, we will submit the budget for all the programs that we are going to propose for the new fiscal year using the improvement business, uh, business improvement fund. Okay, and the businesses are in agreement in us using that money, I mean, that fund coming from there? Um, under the requirement, any any uh, events that is going to happen in within the city boundary, 
that we are allowed to use that fund. Okay. However, the, all the programs will be uh, brought to the city council for your review and approval. Okay. That will be uh, in May. In May, so we'll have the final. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Yes. Exactly. All right. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Okay. If not, we're going to go ahead. Um, Yes. Motion to approve. Go, going to go ahead and motion to approve. I'll second. Any objections? Seeing none, so move. All right. Item 10, request by Councilman Ricardo Pacheco, the resolution electing uh, to join in other uh, communities in L.A. County and opting out of the requirements of the congestion management program established in 1990 by Proposition 1111. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I, I just had a question of what are the pros and cons of, of not participating in this? Is there a financial savings and would we lose any... Any other benefits? A good question, uh, Councilman Pacheco. In talks with uh, Metro, there is no negative effects. If uh, hypothetically, hypothetically, if the council were not to move forward with uh, with the roads resolution, uh, by default, it, uh, it looked. Let me back up a little bit. So this morning, when I talked to Metro, so far they have uh, uh, 47 cities um, that will be opting out of the CMP. For those 89 jurisdictions that are within the region um, will by default uh, be opted out of the CMP. So if we don't do it tonight, it, it'll eventually happen once uh, the other cities opt out. Okay. Um, the city of Los Angeles um, will help meet that threshold to meet the 5.1 million mm -hmm. uh, population and then with the 47, uh, 45 jurisdictions to opt out formally out of the uh, CMP. And Ron, if I could add to it, yeah, there's not really any downsides, but there are some pluses because it would relieve some of the staff time uh, from some of the mundane accounting that they have to do for this program that most um, agencies feel is obsolete. That is correct. All right, thank you. Uh, move approval. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by uh, Vice Mayor. Any objections? Seeing on so move. All right, we'll go over to item 12, which is the approval of the exclusive franchise for for official police toll services franchise uh, Royal Coaches. At this point, Councilmember Alejandra Avila. Thank you, Mayor. So um, Salazar, uh, first of all, the Salazar family, I, I know you were established in 1973, which is great. Um, I think it's wonderful that, that people can move into our community and establish a business. And but by what I can see, they're very successful. They're, they're doing a good job. But we've given, Baldwin Park gave them the opportunity to come in and establish a business. Um, let's move forward to 2019. Let's say a resident just moves into Baldwin Park. They want to do the same thing. They want to establish a, a towing service. But now we're offering to have royal coaches be the only ones here in the city of Baldwin Park. I feel that we're kind of closing the doors for any new residents trying to bring their businesses in because we're we're trying to have a contract only with uh, royal coaches so I feel that we can go ahead and and keep the contract as is the 10-year contract but not have it exclusive to give other people the opportunity and I understand they're Hispanics and and it, it brings me great pride because I'm Hispanic too but we need to look at everything. We need to make sure that we are being fair to all races and ethnicities to try to bring their businesses here to the city of Baldwin Park so that when they come here, they feel welcome. They don't feel like, well, I can't open a, a tow business because somebody already has an exclusive contract. Again, there's nothing against Royal Coaches. They already have a 10-year contract. I really don't feel it should be exclusive. We should be able to give the opportunity to any other business or any other business, um, family moving into Baldwin Park that wants to strive and do better just like the Salazar family has. And uh, I would make a motion to keep the contract as is, but not do it, n not give them the contract itself, just, All right. just for them. All right, so at this point, th there's, a mo there's a motion by, by, by Council Member Alejandro Avila to leave the contract as is. Is there a second? All right, the motion, uh, the motion uh, loses uh, for a lack of, of a second. So at this point, let me just real quick just also, and I understand what, what, what you're saying as well. Royal Coaches is definitely a, a company that's been in this community for many, 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 many years. They have literally um, 
uh, contributed uh, hundreds, if not, well, for sure, thousands of dollars uh, throughout the community. So we're talking to the youth, to the schools, uh, to the city, and a multitude of different things, to our concerts and, and you name it. And, and the city of West Covina gave them an exclusive uh, 10 years now. So this is, this is a city of West Covina, uh, a, a city over 100,000. So it says a lot for the neighboring city to be able to give them that 10 year. And of course, they're definitely a growing, a growing business from the city of Ballpark. And we take a lot of pride in them. And, and I know you do as well, and I think it's important. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and move uh, to provide them with an exclusive uh, the exclusive uh, um, uh, towing uh, service for the 10 years that we've given them before. So that is that is my motion. So at this, is there, is, I'll so let me just that. read it. Okay, one, award the exclusive franchise agreement to road coaches and authorize uh, the mayor to execute an amendment franchise agreement for official police toll services and road coaches auto body and towing approved as formed by the city attorney. So at this point, that's my motion. It was seconded by the vice mayor of the city of Baldwin Park. Are there any objections? Objections. Okay, um, so at this point, there's one, one, one objection. So at Ma Madam City Clerk, and, at this and point, just we to could, make clear oh, that's fine. That's again, fine. I, I'm happy that Royal Coaches was able to come here and create their business and open a business and be successful. I just feel that other people deserve the right to do the same thing. I just feel we need to give the opportunity, and I want to be that city that people look at and say, City of Baldwin Park gives everybody the opportunity to start a new business. They don't give exclusive contracts. They give us the opportunity. I'm not saying you're not doing a good job. I'm not saying that, that uh, we shouldn't give you the contract. I just feel that other people should have the same opportunity that you have had to be successful. That's all I'm saying. Thank oh, you. Uh, thank you. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and do roll call. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay. Councilman Pacheco? Uh, yes. Councilman Hernandez? Yes. Councilman uh, Avila? No. Mayor Pochem Garcia? Yes. Mayor Lozano? Yes. Okay. The motion passes 4 1. Let me just uh, real quick also say that, you know, they're, they're a business, uh, uh, an established business, the city of Ballpark, and they also struggled. And believe it or not, they were also discriminated by major companies throughout the San Gabriel Valley. So when I look at this particular company, they're a dream come true. Uh, and they deserve every little bit of, of what, the, what was provided to them today. And I know they're going to continue on uh, to comp contribute throughout the San Gabriel, not only Ballon Park, but throughout the San Gabriel Valley. Because it's not just Ballon Park that they service. They service a multitude of different cities, and it has become competitive. But they were a firm at one time, Billy, where they were not giving your dad an opportunity to serve based on the fact that you were a brown uh, looking individual or Latinos for that matter. So uh, at this point, I just want to say that because it's important for us to make sure that we also set the record straight. Uh, and thank you on behalf of the city of Baldwin Park. All right. Uh, Mayor, I just wanted yes. to add, uh, I know that I think last year we approved uh, two total services to uh, provide service to the community, but I'd like the city manager to explain what happened to the last we had two toll services and then one oh. kind of dropped out. Didn't drop out. Well, no, yeah, no. we actually had to go through a process to cancel their franchise um, due to property violations and violations with their um, conditional use permits. Yes, so, so, Mr. Mayor? Yes, yes, Councilmember Paul Thank you. Um, to Councilmember Avila, you have great points. Um, I, I do. They're without a, without a doubt. They have uh, they resonate. Um, certainly, at least for myself, um, one of the reasons for why I supported you know this exclusive franchise is you know as as we build long term partnerships, um, I want to make sure that those individuals and those organizations, such as the tow company, have the ability and have st stability uh, to function in our in our city as they have in the past years. Now, also for those that are, as you pointed out. Uh, for new companies that want to begin towing, uh, there's nothing that precludes them to start a new company uh, here in Baldwin Park. Uh, the only thing that obviously is uh, that won't be available to them is to tow, um, you know, on behalf of the city uh, police and on behalf of the city. Uh, you know, it is a long-term uh, process. Uh, you know, we did also have uh, another, you know, there was another agency uh, organization that did have the ability to uh, provide and pro and show you know demonstrates uh, their skill set and their professionalism um, and you know we 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 went through that process 
they did not show their commitment um, in a timely fashion. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, there was a lot of issues uh, in their in their presentation, uh, which is all in public. Uh, so it's one of those things where I, I think this does make sense, at least to myself, um, in providing these long-term exclusivity. We do this also for waste management um, and some other, I believe that's the other uh, only other contract that we do. But uh, this is not something that's new to, to cities or in, and new to this city at all. So right, and you. I understand that, and I was also there. I, I also voted uh, against the other tow company because I agreed. They had to follow the CUP, and they had, there was a lot of regulations they were not following. However, that doesn't mean anybody coming in will not try, will do the same thing. I just feel we're just not giving others the opportunity. Again, Royal Coaches is great, and they do a lot for the community, but we are not giving another company, another family to do the same because we won't give them the long term. And yes, we're talking about getting specific uh, toll for the police department, which is one of our biggest money makers. So that's my concern. I, I just want to feel that we are being fair to everybody, nothing against Royal Coaches. And again, I also agreed to cancel the other contract because they were not following through. And I would do the same if, if anybody else from whatever company was doing, if they're not following through, I would also agree to cancel. Thank you. Right. Mayor. Thank, yes, uh, Council, uh, Vice Mayor Monica Garcia. Thank you. I just want to say that Royal Coaches has uh, served this community for about 20 years, if not more, perhaps. They've been doing a great job. I joined the City Council in 2007, and I feel like Royal Coaches has always been very responsive, uh, not only to, you know, the the needs of the, the city council. And when I say that, it, I'm referring to uh, when we were bombarded by community concerns and we had to adjust the policy so that it was more sensitive to our community. And I felt Royal Coaches really was, you know, responded to that, worked in partnership with the city. And um, instead of taking a more, you know, uh, defiant approach, you said, we're gonna work together. We're gonna, you know, figure this out together. And I just appreciate those gestures. I've appreciated that you've been very active in supporting our community, um, you know, constantly present at our uh, summer concerts and things like that. So I just feel like, you know, you have given to this community. You have been responsive to, to the city and to the community and to the city council. And um, I also understand that as a business, you do need to plan ahead and you have to, you know, um, plan ahead for assets and for, you know, purchasing of vehicles. And, and this just, it's a way of saying we appreciate the work that you've done with our community. And it's also a way of, of, of us saying, you know, we, we, we look forward to that partnership um, and, and that supportive, collaborative um, spirit, you know, that we've worked within. And in addition to that, the police department, um, you know, in, in a staff report back in August of last year, actually expressed their, their preference for having one tow company. And we have a rel relatively small city here, um, so I think it's, it's just less confusing, there's more accountability, and um, you know, certainly in, in the collaboration that we have with you, I know that there will be great accountability there, so thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, so, oh, Usher. bless you, okay. All right, so at this point, uh, we're going to go over to the um, City Council Acting Ex Successor Agency, the South Community Development Commission. So at this point, uh, we have um, Successor Agency uh, to dissolve the Community Development Commission of the City of Ball Park Treasurer. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and move uh, for both uh, S uh, SA1 and SA2. That's my motion. Second. Any objections? See not so move. All right, we're going to go to the public hearing, which is a request to the City Council from the Planning Commission and an amendment to uh, the development agreement 1803 to grant the manufacturing license in order to re repackage the products for cult cultivators and manufacturers of cannabis with nice seeds. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and open this. We're, we're opening up the public hearing. So anyone to speak on this particular subject in favor, you may do so at this point. So that's in favor. Anyone wishing to speak? Opposed? No opposed, so at this point I close the public hearing. I'm going to go ahead and make a motion uh, to pass an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Baldwin Park to enter into a development agreement with uh, Rookling for distribution of cannabis at the real property located at 4150 Puente Avenue, APN 8437-014-014 within the City of Baldwin Park. That is my motion. Second. 
Second, any objections? See none, so I'll move. All right, so at this point, we're going to go to item 14. But before I forget, just saw some, uh, some of our dignitaries are here from the city of El Monte. So we have Jessica. I want to thank you for being here. Uh, and also, um, a lot of big projects in the city of El Monte as well. So we're going to take a tour with you. Uh, and also, Roger Hernandez, thank you for being here. And we have uh, former council member Marlene Garcia. Love her, her, her granddaughter all over Facebook. Then we have the, we have the president of the uh, Valley County Water. Is it you, Margarita Vargas? You're the vice president. Thank you, Margarita Vargas. And also, we have Mr. Javi uh, Vargas as well. Uh, he's a board member and also the president of the uh, um, Eastside Little League as well. Who that? Oh, before I forget, how can I forget on this end over here? I uh, want to thank, thank you, Diana Coronado Robles. Uh, thank you for being here. An awesome person. Uh, did I miss anyone else? Okay. Who? Oh, Al Contreras as well. So let, let them know who recognize him. All right. Jasmine Lopez. All right. Who else? And, oh, Jasmine Lopez was here. That's right. Okay. All right. Okay. So at this point, we're going to item 14, which is the public hearing regarding the fiscal year 2019 2020 community development block grant and the home investment partnership. So at this point, we're going to go in. How many are here to speak on the actual subject? Five? Okay. All right. So let's open. I'm gonna, I will go ahead and open up the public hearing. So come on up. Uh, or, or wait a minute. Can we move this to the following meeting? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead. Sorry about that. What we'll do at the following meeting, we'll go right into this particular subject. Yes. Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and do the public speaking, the public hearing. Let's. I'm going to, I will go ahead and open it up so those of you that will, uh, want to speak uh, regarding the community uh, block grant, you're welcome to do so at this point. Thank you very much. We have approximately three minutes. I know, I, I know that uh, Pastor uh, Dr. Flores can do that probably less than that. So we'll look at it. All righty. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good. How are you all? Thank you. My name is Martha. I'm from the San Gabriel Valley Coalition for the Homeless, and I'm here to speak about um, our emergency assistance center. Um, I would first like to thank the city of Baldwin Park for um, giving us grant money for that program for uh, many, many years. Um, we have had a lot of clients, a lot of homeless clients from the city of Baldwin Park utilizing our services for a very long time. And um, as many of you uh, may be aware, homelessness is a big, big issue right now. Um, unfortunately, there is very limited affordable housing. Um, so that leads a lot of individuals and families to become homeless. Um, let's see, for fiscal year 1819, that's the current year we're at, we had anticipated serving 300, 300 um, duplicated client visits with 200 new people from only the city of Baldwin Park coming into our office. Um, already we have exceeded both of those figures. We've already serviced um, 450 duplicated clients. And, oh, and I'm sorry, for the unduplicated, we're, we are almost there. We have 169 new people coming in. And for right now, the total is 619. Um, for the last fiscal year, we also went past the number that we anticipated. Um, so there, there is a great, a great need for um, services for the homeless. Um, the money that the city of Baldwin Park provides we use it for motel vouchers um, for families who have the children. We have people coming in there for showers, clothing, hygiene items, um, and referrals to other human services agencies um, who can help them if, we, if we're not able to. Uh, we also have our winter shelter program that runs from December 1st through March 3rd. It, it just ended. Um, and we also have a bridge program, which is a link of the Emergency Assistance Center. And that program um, is specifically for families who have children, who um, have income, and who really are, um, who are there to get, get permanent housings, who need our help to save money, and they need wraparound services to get that, to get the housing. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think that's it. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. What's the name of your organization? The East San Gabriel Valley Coalition for the Homeless. You guys do, good, you guys do a phenomenal job, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next. Good evening, hey, good Mayor, evening. City Council members, and public here. Uh, some of you already know me, but for those who don't know me, I'm Cynthia Espinoza. And I serve as the Community Service Officer and Domestic Violence Advocate with the uh, Fallen Park Police Department. And today I'm actually here just to talk a little bit about two of the programs that we have, which is the Pride Platoon and our Domestic Violence Program. Um, the Pride Platoon is one of the biggest programs within our city. We've been doing that for many, many years. I believe it's over 15 years now. We're actually going to start our 25th class this Saturday. And a little bit of that program is that we um, target high school students and junior high students, I mean, yeah, junior high students, and we try to show them what pride means, which is our pride, respect, integrity, discipline, and enthusiasm. How do we accomplish all that? Well, we actually work with a lot of different organizations around our city, which are um, some of them that I'm going to go ahead and mention are the uh, Bond Park School District. We have the um, County Probation Department. Department of Parole, we have uh, Los Angeles um, District Attorney's Office, Department of Corrections, Kaiser, local bank institute um, here in the city, and then church organizations. And we also have the ROP, which what that does is um, when they finish the program after 10 weeks, they get five credits. Uh, North Park gets 10 credits. So um, some of the topics that we talk to the students during the eight hours for the eight, uh, 10 weeks that we're there, our, we do a physical education and training, risk of um, sexual practices, gang and drug awareness, prison life, how to survive an active shooting at school, first aid and CPR, financial empowerment, character development, and other uh, opportunities and benefits of military or college. And what we actually started doing three years ago, we, we decided that it was really important not just for our, the department to be part of it and the students, but also the parents. So we actually have two Saturdays where the parents come out for four hours, and we have a parent counselor there for the parents to ask questions and kind of help them guide with the students. So again, like I said, we're going to start our, our 25th platoon class this Saturday. Uh, we have 25 applicants uh, already. So uh, tomorrow's the last day. So if you guys know of any students that are still interested, we're still taking applications for uh, our 25th platoon. So that's for the pride platoon. Um, now, is it okay if I talk a little bit about yes. the domestic? Okay. Yes. So, I've been doing the domestic violence program for about 10 years now. I think it's going to be about 10 years. I think we started this um, in 2010, so about nine years or so. So, um, to me, it's really important, and it was really important for um, the police department, city council to get this going. We've been doing it. We've been helped. We have helped over a thousand victims, and that's not counting walk-ins or phone calls. Continue. Yeah. I continue. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead, go, yeah, ahead, okay. go ahead. And uh, the way that we do this is we have contact with the victim. We explore safety uh, options for them. We do personal counseling. I refer them to different um, agent, uh, service agencies outside the city or within the city. <coughs> One of them is Winks, where they're here, Neighborhood Legal Services, Victim Compensation and Government Claim Boards, the victim information and notification of every day. So I go ahead and give them the telephone number so they could go ahead and register. And as soon as the um, perpetrator is going to get released, they actually get then, um, a phone call or a text letting them know that they're going to get released. And I also have the contact with the uh, county uh, victims advocates within the court systems. So we kind of work together. They contact me. I let them know a little bit of what's going on with their case. And I assist them with and help them give them information on restraining orders. I assist the district attorney with uh, relocation of the victims. I do presentations at local high schools for uh, teen dating violence. And then I also help them out with the use of, of um, U visa paperwork, which is an immigration benefit for, for um, eligible victims. We've been doing that for a while. And I also work hand in hand with the detectives officers and we like I said we have helped over a thousand victims from when we started the program to the present time now so 
Again, I just wanted to say thank you, and this is a little bit of what we do within law enforcement. So um, if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to answer your questions. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. All right, Mulan with the uh, CDBG Black Grant hearing. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council evening. members. Uh, my name is Michael Ward with St. John the Baptist Social Services. So we deal everything with the fun stuff like Zumba, uh, food bank, immigration citizenship, and then we have emergencies kind of like Officer Espinosa. Um, talking tonight about the parenting and violence prevention class. Uh, thank you for the prior support. It is an important part of our uh, program. We have an instructor. She's bilingual, English, Spanish, and a licensed MSW who works full time with Downey Unified and then comes over here. Our clients tend to be in rather dire situations. Um, we do have probation department approval, so that kind of gives you an indication. Um, our, we market it, quote unquote, to the parish, public and private schools, uh, probation department, uh, online, as much as we can. There's no religious check at all for that program. Um, paperwork, we do do it. Uh, we're very thorough with it. And some of our clients suggest that they just get the paperwork and leave and not have to attend class. We do make them attend class. Um, frankly, a lot of them need it. Uh, follow up, we think is important. It's not in the budget, but we do a lot of case management. So what that means is a lot of these clients have other problems. So at Thanksgiving, we make sure they have a Thanksgiving box to take care of the family to relieve the stress at that time. And what's good about our instructor, she does two sessions a year, 10 classes each. If they like the class or they need it, they can come back for the second one. But she caters it to the client. So if everyone speaks Spanish, they speak Spanish. If everyone speaks English, they speak English. If it's a problem with the kids, she focuses on kids. If it's a problem with the spouse or a couple, she focuses on that. She can adjust the program but makes it efficient. Uh, we do get feedback from the clients, and they've been happy with it, and it seems to be working. And I think that's the important thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you for what you do. All right, moving along with the public hearing for the community black grant. Dr. Flores. Good evening, Mayor and Council, and thanks for your patience tonight. Uh, Paul Flores, I serve at Church of the Redeemer here in Baldwin Park, California, representing today our food program. And we're very grateful for uh, the um, partnership of the city with a lot of our constituencies and service organizations here that help to uh, make life better for our, our citizens of Baldwin Park. Um, our food bank has been well established for many, many years, and we're very grateful for the city's support through the block grant to help uh, further establish that as well, too. So I gave you the handout. It just has all the different numbers, gives you our story about for the last 25 years, we're a multi-generational, multicultural, multilingual, and as we've seen Ballin Park change the demographics, so the people that serve, uh, we're, we're fortunate and blessed that the people that serve our city are from our city, and many have come through the program as well, too. Um, we, uh, we aim to be engaged with the community, to continue to enlarge our footprint and circle of influence to increase uh, college attendance and life for Baldwin Park. Uh, currently, uh, our, our current grant, um, we have proposed for $12,500 because of the greater need. Um, this will help support in collaboration with what our, our, our church people and community give. Uh, we currently have 2,000 that we serve. Uh, we're projecting that's going to go up because of uh, current situations, and, and we roughly serve about 200 families um, every month as well as every day um, on emergency basis as well too. So our scope of services are 200 households per month, about uh, 150 at Thanksgiving, uh, daily and weekly distributions, and we do deliver uh, food when necessary. People don't have transportation. Uh, we're grateful for the partnerships with various other um, uh, people and support system that give voluntarily, and uh, we project a greater need. So we hope uh, you would consider that when you um, consider the opportunity you have to support uh, various programs like ourselves. Uh, thank you, and have a great evening. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Flores. All right, Muma, anyone else?
Thank you and good evening. My name is Anna Interiano and I'm with the YWCA San Gabriel Valley and we provide, a, we're a multi-service organization providing domestic violence services as Cynthia indicated and senior services into the, in the San Gabriel, Pomona and Los Angeles area. We submitted a CDB, DBG grant for $10,000 to provide intensive case management for our seniors. We, um, uh, we do provide these services for seniors and disabled adults, and we propose to do this in the city of Baldwin Park at, our, at the senior center. It's something we currently do with a lot of other cities, and it's the first time we would be doing this with Baldwin Park. Our goal is to keep seniors healthy and enable them to live sufficiently and independently in their own home. The why do this, why provide these services? Because we know that a lot of the seniors have social isolation and a lot, and we provided the intensive case management that would reduce that and would allow them to live independently in their home. We provide them with a raise of services that include intensive case management, various food sources that includes our nutritional program that is in-home supportive services, home deliver meals, meals on wheels, and um, services at our 24 different congregate meal sites. All of our services are free and confidential, and the beauty of our intensive case management program is that our services really link them to the community, so we, we link them to access to transportation, whether it's respite care, home, whether we're connecting them to other seniors, and it's, it's really important, important for them to thrive. So our, really our goal is connect them because by providing them with the education and the resources and linkages that they need in the community, they're going to be healthy and they're going to be safe. One of the things that we try to do is um, reduce the goal of institu institution. We know that adult, a lot of seniors are, in, are, are living in isolation, and quite frankly, many of the ones that we do see are low income. We are currently seeing a lot of clients already from seniors from Bowen Park. Actively, we have... 34 active and 62 that we recently closed. And these are seniors that we've been providing services to, but we've never really received any funding. Again, our services, we meet them where they are because it, it could be in their home, it could be in the senior center, or in a safety and confidential location. And we're, uh, you know, we would love to be able to partner with Bowen Park because we're already doing a lot with Bowen Park and Kaiser in this area. So case management is really our niche, and it is our goal to provide seniors so that they thrive and they are healthy and happy, and most importantly, independent. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak? Okay, if not, I am officially closing the public hearing for the Community uh, Development Black Grant. We're going to bring this back to the following city council meeting so we could further study it and kind of look at the funding. So just want to let everyone know. All right, so at this point, so at this point. Okay. Okay, all right, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and close it. And all right, all right so it's officially closed. <clears throat> We're going to go over to the... Um, the uh, request, uh, let me see the public case. Yeah, so we're going to bring, I'll go ahead and make a motion. We bring it second. to the following, uh, second, any objections, see none, so move. All right, the next one, the report of officers, um, review of commissions. We're going to bring this back to the following meeting, and we will definitely move on this to let everyone know, okay? Item 16, approve and adopt resolution number 2019-008, entitled Resolution of City Council of the City of Ballin Park. Uh, appointing representatives and alternatives as official representatives of the city and review the appoint members to establish committees a, as appropriate. Is that the one we did last time, right? Yeah. Yes, correct? you filled all but about four positions. There okay, bring those, then to... then bring, those, bring those back to the following meeting. Okay, okay, so I'll make a motion to bring it to the following meeting. Is, that, is there a second? Second by, by uh, Councilman Alejandra Avila. Any objections? Seeing on so move. Uh, the next one, request by Councilman Ricardo Pacheco for a city council discussion and direction to an staff. Uh, Councilman Ricardo Pacheco? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mayor, and um, I'll just read my request. I want to have a discussion on the needs of the community concerning affordable housing and that direct that we provide direction to staff and reconvene later during a workshop study session with solutions for affordable housing crisis and to further assess properties around the downtown area specifically adjacent to the and across the street from the civic center uh, as possible options to explore <clears throat> to develop a fair community housing initiative so what what i'm uh, asking the council to do is uh, there's a lot of affordable housing issues uh, throughout the city of Ballpark. Um, 
a lot of the uh, <clears throat> owners of rental properties are raising their rates as has been brought up here but uh, out in the community when I'm talking to, to our constituents a lot of them are talking about affordable housing issues uh, the fact that uh, they can't really afford the affordable the, the housing and the rents as uh, they continue uh, to increase let me just give you some a few uh, facts about <coughs> the affordable housing issues or housing deficiencies here in the city of Baldwin Park. Overall, Baldwin Park has 17,375 households, of which 11,105 are low income, about 64%. Of, of those 11,105 households, 7,418, or about 67%, are um, have. Uh, they spend about 30% of their income for housing expenses. And 4,339% are severely cost burdened. That means they're spending more than 50% of their income for housing expenses. Um, and of that, 11,105 uh, low income households are 22%, or about 2,465 are experiencing overcrowding in their homes. So I would like to get uh, with the city council, establish a few workshops, get input from all the community, the different churches, the different nonprofits, uh, residents that are impacted by uh, affordable housing uh, issues, and establish a program where we can begin to talk to developers that, uh, that provide affordable housing. And we have some pretty good uh, affordable uh, partners here in our, in our community. There's a one on Ramona, and I call it the Ferguson Project, but I'm not, I don't remember the actual name of the, of the company. They provide very good affordable housing for families. Uh, the Teleco also provides good affordable housing. They've been a good partner with the city for many years. I think they have two uh, areas here. And also Rome is also a good partner in providing good um, affordable housing. But i just like to open it up, and at some point, won't we establish through workshops, what the needs of the community are, then we'd be able to um, to to require put those requirements in for the affordable developers that would come in and begin to establish um, specifications for for the type of housing that that we would uh, like to uh, look forward to. Uh, I would like to emphasize, in particular, on veterans, and, uh, families, and children. Um, also, affordable housing for very low-income families at risk affordable housing for seniors on fixed income, and affordable housing for working families in the workforce. Also, single parent housing, mothers and fathers uh, that need uh, affordable housing uh, for their families. So I think uh, with the data that we have, we'll be able to put something together and then start to look for these type of uh, uh, developers that would be able to bring affordable housing. Uh, the recent developers that we have, they're not really affordable housing. They really have a... Um, homes that they're making that are very high market rate, and I don't think that a lot of our community uh, could afford them. So I, I developed, I brought a map that worked with staff and came up with some areas, and it doesn't have to be these areas, but I think that uh, there's areas that are unutilized uh, land or that could be improved upon that uh, you know we could possibly, once we establish a list of affordable housing uh, companies or, or developers, uh, they could propose a site or if they find one in another part of the city, you know, we could look at those two. Uh, but, you know, obviously the one behind Taco Naso, which is the one uh, north of the Ramona Boulevard, um, the Verizon building is is something that we could talk to Verizon about, about building some type of mixed use there. Uh, the Rome project could be expanded across the street. Uh, the old medical center there that's being either leased or sold, we could look talk to the property owners there. Uh, obviously, the desolate area in front of City Hall that's many years has been vacant. Uh, we could look at doing some large affordable housing there. Across the street where the old medical center is, we could possibly do some work there. And where the uh, the little medical center with next door to the car wash, uh, we could also look at that and look at it. So I just want to sit down. Really, I don't have anything concrete, but... I want to work with the community, <clears throat> with our constituents, with our residents, our partners, our nonprofits, city council members, uh, our school district, board members. We have a lot of information about the needs for families. 
you know, in our churches and just kind of get together. Let's all just sit down and work and, and develop a plan that will begin to address uh, the affordable housing issues that we have here in our city. So I'm just going to ask staff if we could start having maybe three workshops where staff could kind of lead the workshop and, and uh, establish a plan with the goal of being able to uh, select requirements for affordable housing groups. Thank you. Right, thank you. Mayor, may I say something? Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Councilman Pacheco. Um, that is a wonderful idea. You are right. We are in need of affordable housing. Um, uh, with you having said that and, and pointed out some locations and some developers, uh, a few weeks back, uh, the developer that developed Mart's Place in Pasadena gave a presentation at a special meeting, um, which is uh, they actually focus on the homeless families and they provide wraparound services. Not only do they provide wraparound services, but they also maintain the property to make sure that it stays looking the way it was when they first was developed. So again, if we could continue to go back to that developer and see what else we can get. I know Almani has another builder, I believe it's Hollywood Homes, that they're uh, building homes uh, for the homeless and affordable housing also. And they come out and they look at the city, they look for areas, maybe land that they can purchase. And so if we can get them out here also, the more uh, developers that we have to pick from that best benefits our city, I think that would be better. But thank you for that, Mr. Pacheco. Thank you, very good idea by both. All right. So thank you very much. We'll definitely follow up. Uh, and then the next one request by recreation and staff, city council. Do we need to do this right now, Manny? Is there an urgency? No, Mayor, we could do it this next council meeting, around. just as long as we have it completed by April 5th, the okay, state, state, state of the city right. address. So this I'm going to move for adjournment of the city council. That Mayor, I'd just, I just like to read a closing prayer. Sure. Or a poem, actually, that I found. Uh, Dear God, we are proud of the things that make us uniquely American, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Statue of Liberty, our patriotic songs. We are proud of how our nation has lent a helping hand to other nations throughout the world, and of our willingness to share our bounty. We are proud of our image as a melting pot. This pride is natural in so great a nation, yet we realize that Americans need more than pride. Help us to know when to be humble. Forgive, forgive us those times when our arrogance has built walls, when we should have been constructing bridges. Open us to other people and other nations so we can all work uh, for peace without measuring which nation gives the most? Let us continue to be proud of our nation, even as our knowledge uh, becomes abundant and that we have been hurtful to others. Guide us to live with all people on earth in, in harmony. Amen. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor. Right. So at this point, uh, move for adjournment. Oh, before you do that, sir, yes, go ahead. if I can. Um, if I could just ask uh, the chief, if you could, um, I know we've talked about this, but if you could please provide us with uh, quarterly reports on the crime stats. Um, I know you've been providing us that already on a monthly basis, but in uh, April or mid-April or at the end of it, if you could provide us, uh, you know, that ongoing um, quarterly reports and uh, also provide a year-end uh, report of uh, 2018 for us. Alrighty. Okay, thank you um, very much. Yes, go ahead. Good thing you mentioned that, uh, Councilmember Hernandez. I think it's the city of Pasadena, don't quote me on that, that they actually put those updates on the website so residents can be looking at it and they know where the crimes have been committed, what kind of crimes. Maybe it's something that we can look at uh, aside from getting us the report, but that's a wonderful idea that we were all updated. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. At this point, I'd like to move for adjournment. City Council? Second. Any objections? See none, so move. All right, at this point, I'd like to open up the uh, Baldwin Park Housing Authority. Uh, we'll move for consent calendars items one and two. That is my motion. Second. Any objections? See none, so move. Then we have the public hearing, which was, it's already been taking place in this, right? So at this point, I'd like to move for uh, adjournment of the Housing Authority. That's my motion. Second. Oh, these are two different ones? Okay. All right, I'll open up the, the public hearing, uh, Baldwin Park's Housing Authority public hearing agency. So at this point, anyone that wishes to speak in favor and or opposed? See no interest, and I'll declare the public hearing closed. So at this point, move for adjournment of the Housing Committee Second. Authority. Any objections? See none, so move. Was that the last one? We got the finance? Finance. All right, thank you. At this point, I'd like to open up the Finance Authority and consent calendars items one. I'd like to move uh, for approval. Second. For second, any objections? See not so moved. 
All right, at this point, I'd like to move for adjournment. Second. Let's say, real quick, I'm not going to end on Viva Bon Park. I just want to say uh, that we need to pay respect uh, for John McCain, who was a war hero, and unfortunately has become a, 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 a somewhat of a, a ping pong paddle uh, by the President of the United States. Shame on him, who, who literally didn't go to the, was not, excuse me, had four deferments not to go to Vietnam, and people died for this man. And I just want to close on behalf of a hero, Mr. John McCain, a senator of the state of Arizona. He is a hero. Thank you. Good evening. Bye-bye. Very nice. Well done.